Hey guys and girls, welcome back to KWTV episode 2. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everybody for the nice comments on KW episode 1. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. It was all a little bit sudden, but that's due to the 10 minute limitations that we have on YouTube. So I gotta talk really fast because otherwise I'm not going to get the whole show in. So wrapping up, Katie Murray, thank you very much for the link in the Global Geek Podcast. Thank you everybody for coming by. And no, this is not a large remodel doing the presentation. It's me. You just have to do, okay? Today, um... A very nice old school clip that's almost three years old, almost four years old, about me and my buddy Swift doing some war driving back in 2004 or something like that. So uh, the tools might be a little bit old and it might all be a little bit passe, but it just shows you how easy to, it is to just, you know, drive up to somebody's wireless network, open up the box and go surfing on somebody else's pipe. Enjoy this little retro episode of KW TV. Episode 2, Wall Driving with Knight and Swift. Yeah! <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Wall Driving with Knight and Swift. Today, we are going to show you how to war drive. Yes, war drive. What is war driving? War driving is hacking into networks of stupid suckers who do not have security on their access point. Now, to war drive with Knight and Swift, you need several things. A list. One, you need a good network card. A good network card, yeah. Why is this a good network card? Because you can hang it outside the car. And you need a laptop. This one, yeah. And not this like German Hiricom crap. No, you need a good laptop. You need a German keyboard. Why? Because all the cool guys have one. And you need a car. It's not much, but it's okay. Oh and you need one Swift. Yeah. <laughs> uh, check. And then you need one Knight. Hello. So, then you need the right software. As you can see, we are downloading the right software. And very soon you are going to see War driving with Knight and Swift 101. Hello and welcome back to the second part of War driving with Knight and Swift. As you can see, we are driving through a small town called Rijkhoven and we are equipped with one laptop and of course one wireless access point. I hope you can see this, but as it goes right now, we don't have any access point available. And as I speak, we are finding the first bank. Yep, unsecured, somewhere around here, so we're going to see if we can turn around. Oh, another one! So no, it's not a musical installation, it's uh, actually a look at uh, how good the networks are in uh, the town square of Bilsen. As you can see, we have... Uh, two uh, access points on channel one but we're not receiving any SSIDs except from Louette in Bilsen. As you can see two Cisco's Louette Bilsen wide open. As you can see uh, the summary of driving around the uh, town square of Bilsen um, several access points and only one is secured as you can see the City Hall of Bilsen uh, Stadhuis WAP SSID has a secured network. Um, now the uh, Stadhuis is at the back of the square. The town uh, hall is at the back of the square. And even at the other side of the square, through the church, you can still pick up its signal. Now, uh, the other problem is it's raining. And uh, we have put our little bank stick outside. and. Uh, Thanks to Goffi's uh, slumsiness, uh, who is uh, responsible for letting pieces of plastic and paper lying around in uh, Swift's car, we are able to uh, waterproof our little bank stick so uh, we can use it outside in these uh, dire, dire, dire uh, circumstances. Thank you, Goffi. Never clean up. Never do. 
Um, I hope you can see this, but uh, we're driving to the uh, industrial zone in Husselt. And uh, there are several access points here, so we know. Um, one's from MSS, a little uh, further up the road. One is from the TAS. And uh, as you can see, there is plenty of open space here. Not much steel or plastic. So it's uh, pretty easy to pick it up. So we hope we can show you something as to how a detection actually works. We have a net stumbler online and we are going to pick up our first access point in a matter of a few seconds, normally. The uh, pitch of the sound you hear is the distance to the access point. The higher the sound, the closer the access point. And we have one. Yep. Toss right in front of our door. Yep, as you can see the uh, network was secure. Uh, actually, it's a very powerful one. We are a little bit down the road and we still are picking up the signal. Here we have our second one. Now actually, we have two. I'm going to take a look which one it are, which one there are. We're just outside of the range. We're not picking anything up as yet. Oh, here it is. Yep. No brands, but uh, we have a good signal. As you can see, we found one. A US Robotics AT22, who is configured as default as hell. We were kind enough to be offered a Pandora inside address right away. 192, 186, 123, 160. Which means this access point is configured as default as it gets. Let's see if we can surf the net on behalf of our little friend here. And as you can see, here we are. A free internet connection right in front of our own doorstep. Want to be completely sure? Let's select just any side. Fiedel and Chris, beautiful pregnant ladies, here we go. But as you can see, Swift is pleased. <laughs> <laughs> but we are not exactly very discreetly positioned. Yeah. So I guess it's better we move on. But not before we try something. You're going to try to establish if there are any other PCs in the neighborhood by doing a net view. However, we don't find anything. Unfortunately, this person has his computer turned off. We do have the ability, however, to put a password on his access point and um, never make it reboot again. But we're, we're night and swift. We're not evil. Well, not really. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye bye. Somewhere in Bevers, we found this uh, access point. Uh, no web encryption or anything. But as you can see, it's a watch guard. And um, well, actually, that's quite expensive. As you can see, we can configure just about everything. We can look at his private network. We can even change some things if we want to. Uh, we can look at his public network. As you can see, here is his IP number, his subnet. And as you can see by the numbers of the DNS uh, numbers, it's uh, Pandora. And it's an Orinoco RG1000 uh, access point. We used another program net called Network Information Tool, which is actually a network IP sniffer. And as you can see, there are several computers alive on the network. So uh, you can actually see quite good which computers are connected and which computers are not connected. We can even uh, try a ping. We can try a trace. But as you can see, we can easily fuck up this guy's network by just uh, disabling the uh, DHCP. But as I said, we are, well, we're nice people, aren't we? As you can see, system administration, if we want to log him out, no problem. If we want to add some services, no problem. But it seems that we have been disconnected. So, um, as you can see, it's actually quite easy. Okay, that's it for KWTV episode two. Um, it's an older video and I have no idea where I picked up that Belgian accent in my English. 
Rest assured, it's gone. Um, see you all next week on KWTV episode three. Have a nice week. Please comment on the website or just send me an email if you like it or if you don't. And ta-da!